This is BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. And drives well. that to center. Center fielder Get Apodaca going, going back, going. back to the track, and it's over the wall! Live play-by-play coverage of BYU Baseball is brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA, proud sponsor of the BYU Baseball team. Now let's get you ready for Cougar Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Good evening once again, Cougar baseball fans. Welcome inside Larry H. Miller Field on the BYU campus in Provo, Utah on a cool, soggy Friday night. It's been raining throughout the day, and the hope is it will either uh, stay light if the rain comes back or just we get a break in this band of precipitation and it stays away all night. But it's been a very wet afternoon. Hasn't rained here in a couple of hours, so we're crossing our fingers. Either way, the plans to get this one underway moments from now as BYU and San Diego play game two of their three-game series. BYU won the opener last night 11-7, to seven, and has now taken four of the last five from the Toreros. I'm your play-by-play presenter, Greg Rubel, starting lineups in the opening pitch at just moments from now. So before that, let's hear from BYU interim head coach Trent Pratt in our leadoff interview presented by doTERRA. doTERRA, pursue what's pure. And tonight, Coach Pratt talks about a BYU team that has won each of its last five games after falling behind 2-0 in each of those games. Suddenly, BYU's turned into the comeback Cougs. Yeah, hopefully it stays that way. It'd be nice to jump out early and score, but, man, if we just keep scoring runs, I don't care when we score them, I guess as long as we're winning games and score more than the other team, we'll be fine. Where does this team resiliency come from, do you think? I just think from each other. I think they generally like like each other and root for each other and have a love for each other. So I just think it's, it's a team that's pretty tight-knit and – especially some older guys that don't panic a lot so they just keep playing the game regardless of the score what'd you like most about the opener i like jack jack you know wasn't sharp but he just kept battling and that was impressive to have him get through what six innings for us and and be able to do that and and just our hitters just man just being tough outs and battling and and making it hard on their pitching staff as we talked about last night up and down the order production yeah, and th- and that's that's what good teams do. It's man, whether it's the one guy or the nine guy, it makes it hard for an opposing pitching staff to, you know, to get through a lineup. But they feel like man, even the guys at the bottom, you know, square me up. You're in the back half of the season. Does it feel like you've settled into a pretty comfortable rotation? You're just kind of set up with this team right now. I think so a little bit. There's still a couple things. The guys are in and out sometimes with certain matchups, but overall, I feel yeah, that core group is. Man, it's doing a pretty good job, and, and hopefully it stays that way. How's Cole Gamble coming along, by the way? He seems to be doing good. He's, he's out of his boot walking around, so, man, hopefully we can get him back soon. Yeah, what's the hope for him? Timetable, out of the boots, one thing. How do you kind of work him back in? Man, just listen to the trainer when, and, and him, and he's got to tell us when he's good. And and hopefully, man, within the next couple weekends, man, we can get him back because that would be a, a big boost for our team to get him back in the lineup. Is he, is he the kind of guy you would DH before you put him in the field kind of thing? Yeah, we just have to see how, his, how he feels and, and how he tells us what he feels like he can and can't do. So, I mean, obviously, if we can have him in the field, that's where we want him. Um, he, he's a plus defender, and but, man, we'll take him in the lineup any way we can get him right now. Can you set up game two uh, on the mound for us tonight? Ryan Brady going for us, and Bryson Mouse going for them, and, and Bryson's really good. You look at his numbers, man, he has plus-plus stuff. He has swing and miss pitches, and, and Ryan Brady, we know what he has, and, man, a good fastball and a slider, and hopefully he can command the bottom of the strike zone, and hopefully we can just make it tough on Bryson and, and, and battle him in, battle him and, and get his pitch count up and score a couple runs off him. And we're just hoping for the best weather-wise. You never know, you could get this thing in tonight. Yeah, we're hoping so. Um, looks like it's kind of a light rain, and so hopefully it dies off and we can play tonight. All right, big series continues for you guys. Best of luck as you and the Toreros play game two tonight. Thank you, Trent. We'll talk to you post-game. Thanks, Greg. All right, and the weather is clear. Well, not clear. It's clear of rain for the time being. That's interim head coach Trent Pratt. Time now for the night's starting lineups, courtesy of Big O Tires. Your local Big O Tires has financing available. Big O Tires, the team you trust, and a lineup change. We just finished hearing from Coach Pratt about Bryson Motts, the dominant left-hander for San Diego. Will not start tonight. Late scratch. They made a change and go to the right-hander, Ivren Romero, at starting pitcher. The rest of the batting order the same from last night for San Diego. BYU's batting order is the same, but for the 
28 hole, where Mason Strong replaces Colin Reuter at catcher. So the Cougs go back to their left-hand bat-heavy lineup with the late change from lefty to righty on the hill for San Diego. The visitors will start with the second baseman, Chase Mydroth, leading off. Hitting second, the right fielder, number two, Angelo Peraza. Hitting third, the first baseman, number 28, Kevin Sim. Hitting cleanup, the left fielder, number 19, Caleb Ricketts. Hitting fifth, the third baseman, number 39, Jack Costello. Hitting sixth, the DH, number 22, RJ Tejero. Hitting seventh, the shortstop, number one, Cody Jeffries. Hitting eighth, the catcher, number 16, Ariel Armas. And hitting ninth, the center fielder, number 12, Dustin Allen. The new starting pitcher for San Diego is number 37, Ivren Romero. The right-hander, not the left-hander, Bryson Motts. BYU leads off with second baseman, Ozzy Pratt, jersey number five. Hitting second, the shortstop, number two, Brock Watkins. For BYU, hitting third, the center fielder, number six, Mitch McIntyre. Hitting cleanup, the first baseman, number 35, Jacob Wilk. Hitting fifth, the third baseman, number 25, Austin Deming. Hitting sixth, the number 27, Ryan Sapiti, who plays right field. Hitting seventh, the DH, number 17, Josh Cowden. Hitting eighth, the catcher, number 24, Mason Strong. And hitting ninth, the left fielder, number 43, Dawson Hall. Starting pitcher for BYU, number 12, Ryan Brady. And Brady's ready to get this one underway at Larry H. Miller Field. Great to have you with us. It's Brady facing Mydroth, and we are underway with a piped-in strike as called by home plate umpire Garrett Wilson. And it's 0-1 to chase Mydroth. Mydroth, last night, wore jersey number 15. Tonight, he's in jersey number 6. Same guy, different number. The 0-1. Outside, 1-1. One and one. San Diego tonight in the road gray pants. Navy blue jerseys. With that sky blue, San Diego blue script across the chest. Navy caps. And that's fouled out of play from Mydroth. One ball, two strikes. BYU in the white pins, pants, and jerseys. The block Cougars across the chest and Navy caps for BYU. One ball, two strikes to second baseman Chase Mydroth. Brady gets a signal, kicks and fires, and it'll be grounded to Austin Deming. He'll handle, throw to first, and... It's a 5-3 ground out to get this one underway. Mydroth, who last night went 1-5 for five with a run scored, is 0-1 for one to get this one going as he grounds out Austin Deming to Jacob Wilk on the 5-3. And Angelo Peraza coming into tonight on a five-game hit streak. Hits with one gone. Four left-handed bats in the San Diego lineup. Against the righty Brady, who winds up and delivers and gets a swinging strike from Angelo Peraza to get ahead 0-1. One out, no one on. We're top one. BYU in San Diego, game two of three. That's low and away from Brady. Four-pitch mix for Ryan. Fastball, high 80s, mid-90s, the limit. Slider in the low 80s. A curve in the high 70s. And a change in the low to mid 80s. One ball, one strike to Peraza. And he'll slice it out of play. Foul down the first baseline into the San Diego bullpen. And so Brady gets ahead of Peraza 1-2 and two, as he was ahead of Mydroth 1-2 and two before Mydroth grounded out to get this one underway. Angelo Peraza, 5'9", buck 70. A compact batting stance. And takes ball two to even the count. Two balls, two strikes. One out and the base is clear. And Peraza really crowds the plate, working on the home plate side of the batter's box, right near the line. And that's a swinging strikeout, a frontwards K. For Ryan Brady, first K of the day. And it's two gone for San Diego here in the top of the first. Yesterday's top of the first saw San Diego score two. And really should have scored more than they got. BYU limited the damage and took advantage, scoring four in the bottom of the second. To take a lead, the Cougs would not relinquish all night. Empty count and two out and off speed for Ryan Brady. At 81. The change for Ryan gets him ahead 0-1. He's been 0-1 to the first three batters tonight. Kevin Sim is hitting the first baseman. And Sim takes outside for ball one. A lot of long sleeves and 
gaiters and hoodies and any way to stay warm on this very cool night here in Provo. The wind's blowing out to right. Last night's wind out to left. It's flipped around tonight. And that's taken ball low for two balls and a strike. Thunderstorms, heavy rain throughout the morning and afternoon, but no rain the last couple of hours, maybe three even hours here at Miller Park, the 2-1. And that'll be a chopper to Deming. He'll handle it third. Settle and fire. One, two, three for BYU in the top of the first. No runs, no hits, no errors. No one left on. We go bottom one. Cougars and Toreros scoreless. BYU bats for the first time next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, just enough opacity in the clouds to create the hint of shadows here at Miller Park. On a cold, blustery night here in Provo. Temperature in Provo right now is 43 degrees with a feels like of 34 with a wind that hits 20 blowing from the north out to right field. BYU hits for the first time with Ozzie Pratt leading off here in the bottom of the first. San Diego went 1-2-3 in the top of the inning. And Ivan Romero, the surprise starter tonight, getting his first start of the season. His long outing, four and a third, as he delivers strike one. Ozzie Pratt takes for the 0-1. Ozzie's got his neck covering pulled up to his face. The kick and fire from Romero. And that sliced opposite field is going to get down. Down the third base line. Ozzie will dig and have himself a... St- he'll slide in. He'll have himself a double to lead off for the Cougs. So Ozzie Pratt doubles to left field. And BYU has a runner in scoring position for Brock Watkins. Lead off double for Ozzie. Ozzie last night, one for five with two RBI. It was a two RBI single for Oz. And the Cougs have something going here in the bottom of the first inning. And now even more defined shadows on the diamond. As there's been some break through the cloud cover to the western skies. Kudos to Ivan Romero going with short sleeves tonight. And he'll deliver low and outside for ball one to Brock Watkins. BYU's hits and total bases leader. He saw his runs lead taken away last night by Austin Deming. Dem now leads the Cougars in runs scored. He has scored nine runs in his last eight games. Deming playing really, really well. All we can see are the eyes of Brock Watkins. He's pulled his neck covering up over his nose. And so it goes from a batting helmet to a sliver of visibility and then down to coverings on the rest of his face. He's like the invisible man down there. All in white with the covering pulled up over his nose. Two balls and no strikes to Watkins with Ozzie Pratt on second with the leadoff double. Romero winds up and delivers. And that'll be a grounder to short. Ozzie will hold his ground and the throw just in time to get Watkins. So it's now one out and one on. A 6-3 ground out keeps Pratt where he was at second base. Mitch McIntyre hits third. Runner in scoring position for Mitch. Mitch hitting 280 with runners in scoring position. The batter's box in shadow. The mound for the time being in, I guess we'll call it sunshine. After a cloudy, rainy day. And Mitch takes down the pipe for strike one from Ivren Romero. Romero making his 15th appearance of the season, but again, his first start, and kind of an emergency start as Bryson Motts, the declared starter, was scratched from the starting lineup nearing game time. And so when they took Motts off the hills, the count goes to one and one. That forced BYU to go back to its left-handed bat-heavy lineup from last night, with the exception of Mason Strong, replacing Colin Ruder behind the plate. Cougars had a different lineup planned for tonight to face Motts. The 1-1. One 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 out, one on. Off speed. Breaking ball stays high for ball two. (laughs) 
Two balls and a strike to Mitch McIntyre, BYU center fielder. Has hits in his last three coming in two tonight. Romero looks back at second once and twice. Now kicks and fires. And that's low for ball three. Three and one to Mitch McIntyre, BYU's on-base percentage leader and bases on balls leader. And he's one ball away from taking a base. Ivan Romero. Fastball slider change. Three-pitch mix for the righty. And that'll be a walk as Mitch takes on the 3-1 count and takes his base. So BYU first and second now with one out for Jacob Wilk, BYU's slugging percentage leader. Jacob last night, two for five with two runs scored. Wilk will step in. Two left-handed and two right-handed bats for Coach Trent Pratt at the top of the order. The right-handed hitting Wilk with runners on first and second with one out. That's top half and a little high for ball one. One ball, no strikes. One out, two on for BYU. Bottom of the first of a scoreless game. Jacob Wilk with the bat waggle and a mighty cut. Misses it for strike one. Romero will give you a fastball in the upper 80s to low 90s. A slider in the mid-70s to around 80. And a change in the high 70s, low 80s. And he goes fastball down the middle. And Jacob swings and misses again. So one ball and two strikes. That was 89 on the heater from Ivan Romero. And a heater would come in handy tonight. It's very brisk out there. The slight shadows notwithstanding. The sun not doing much. That's opposite field out of play down the first baseline. Oh, it hit the light tower. Hit one of the light cans, actually. High up on the tower. That light tower down the right field line. And Wilk dinged it. Count stays one and two to BYU's first baseman. Ivan Romero, the righty, crouches and now comes to the stretch. Comes set and fires. And that'll be a base hit up the middle. Ozzie Pratt rounding third, coming home. There will be a cutoff by the pitcher, allowing Ozzie to slide home safely with the first run of the night. BYU, for the first time in eight games, scores the first run of the game. BYU's opponent had taken the lead, the first lead, in each of the last seven games. BYU had won five of those seven, but the Cougs break out on top tonight. And in the bottom of the first, Jacob Wilk with a single to center, scoring Ozzie Pratt from second. Stopping at second is Mitch McIntyre. And with an RBI single, Jacob Wilk is at first base. BYU won, San Diego no score. Bottom one here at Miller Park. It'll bring Austin Deming to the plate. Austin playing so well. Last four games, hitting 400 with five RBI. The new runs leader for BYU. Romero's going to step off. So Ozzie Pratt, who led the game off for BYU with a double, comes around to score on the Jacob Wilk RBI. The single right up the middle. Cougs won, Terreros no score, bottom one. Still only one out, two on for BYU. Deming goes opposite field, in the air, deep to right, and caught in the right field corner. Both runners will tag. Wilk will go to second. McIntyre will go to third, and now two out for BYU. As Austin Deming put a charge into that, deep into the right field corner, caught to shy the 343 sign in the right field corner. So a long out for Dem. And the runners advance. So a fly out to right field. And there's a conference between San Diego head coach Brock Ungrich and home plate umpire Garrett Wilson right now, about which I don't know they'd be discussing, but 
Ungrich will stride back to the dugout with BYU leading at 1-0. Two gone and two on for Ryan Sapiti, BYU's RBI leader. Has two runners in scoring position. McIntyre at second, Wilk at first. Beg your pardon, McIntyre at third, and Wilk at second after the tags moments ago. On the Deming fly out to right. One ball, no strikes to Sapiti. The kick and fire on the 1 0. High for two balls and no strikes to Sapiti. Ryan, two for four last night with two runs and an RBI. He's the sixth batter to hit for BYU here in the bottom of the first. Cougars one, Toreros zero. On the Jacob Wilk RBI single, scoring Ozzy Pratt. McIntyre at third, Wilk at second now. Sapiti takes a swing at the 2 0, and he'll loft it down the right field line, and it will fall just foul. Beyond the glove of the diving, diving Angelo Peraza, the right fielder. Extended into foul territory and saw the ball bound just beyond the leather. So two balls and a strike to Ryan Sapiti. Again, each of the last seven games saw BYU playing catch up from the get go, but they were good at that. Five comeback wins. And all of them after trailing 2 0. Cooks take a 1 0 lead here in the bottom of the first, and again, opposite field, but again, out of play. Foul down the first baseline. The count will be 2 and 2. BYU thought it would be facing the dominant left hander Bryson Motts tonight. Instead, the Toreros go with the righty Ivan Romero in his first start. Now the wind shifting to blow straightaway center for Sapiti. Oh, and he gets punched out. He thought he was looking at ball three as that was on the upper outside edge of the strike zone. And Garrett Wilson gave it to him. So on the backwards K, BYU ends the first inning with a run on two hits. There were no errors and there were two runners left on. We go top two, BYU 1, San Diego 0 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Top of the second, leading off for the Toreros, the left fielder Caleb Ricketts takes ball one from Ryan Brady, BYU's Friday starter. 2-0 from Ryan. Brady 6'1", 185, the sophomore out of Park City High School. Foul to the screen by Ricketts. Caleb Ricketts coming into tonight on a 17-game reached base streak. And Ricketts was 3 for 5 with a run and 2 RBI last night. Had a home run, solo shot in the 8th. Lifts it in the air. Into foul territory down the third baseline. Austin Deming gives chase and almost made the Willie Mays basket catch. Running away from it down the third baseline. It drops for a foul ball. Two and two. Great effort by Deming. Just deflected it on its way down. Nearly a tremendous catch. So Deming and Watkins will be given time to reset their positions. Two balls, two strikes, no one out. We're top two. The base is clear for the left fielder, Caleb Ricketts. Left-handed bat of Ricketts. First lefty bat for Coach Brock Unrich. And that's a reach-out slow roller to Pratt. He'll handle, fire quickly to Wilk, and the Cougs get Caleb Ricketts at first. Ozzie Pratt with a fine charge on that. Had to fire quickly and did. One gone for BYU here in the top of the second. San Diego... With the 4-3 ground out by Ricketts as one out, bringing Jack Costello to the plate. Costello started all 37 games. Toreros 23 and 13 on the year. BYU 21 and 14. That's low and away to Ricketts for ball or to uh, Costello for ball one. Costello last night was two of four, three RBI. It was a bases-clearing double in the ninth. 
as the count goes to one and one on Costello. By that time, though, BYU had an 11 to four lead with the bases loaded double by Costello, only making the score a little more presentable. 11 seven was your final. The one one. And that's hit in the air. Drops in front of the right fielder, Ryan Sapedi, a one hopper to right. And a base hit, a single for Jack Costello. First hit of the night for San Diego. So RJ Tejero, the DH, will now hit. Another left handed bat. Left handed bats in the four hole, the six, the seven, and the nine for San Diego. Tejero's made all of his starts this year at DH. Two for three, two RBI last night for Tejero. That's a called strike taken by Tejero. Brady gets ahead 0 1. One out, one on. We're in the top of the second here at Miller Park on a cold, gusty night. Game two of three. BYU took the opener last night, 11 7. Cooks have scored exactly 40 runs in the last four games against San Diego, the 0 1. And that's a wave. Brian gets ahead 0-2 on Tejero. Brady coming into today with a whip of 1.32. A strikeout to walk ratio near three. No balls and two strikes. A quick glance back at Costello on first. And Brady with a chase pitch. Sees the count go to one and two. Jersey number 12 for Brady with that pinstriped shirt whipping in the breeze tonight. It's not a breeze, it's a wind. One ball, two strikes to R.J. Tejero. Costello takes his lead at first. BYU 10 pickoffs on the year. And that's foul through the batter's box, rolling toward the San Diego dugout. One and two, the count stays. Ryan plays with uh, prescription sports glasses, white framed glasses. He and Carter Smith both go that way. Left handed hitting RJ Tejero against the righty Ryan Brady. Ryan works third base side of the rubber from the stretch. That's lifted in the air foul down the third base line. The count remains one and two. Greg Rubel with you from Larry H. Miller Field at the Miller Park Complex here in Provo, Utah. They'll do it again tomorrow at 1 o'clock. That's the scheduled first pitch time, 106 Mountain Time. A one-out single for Costello, giving the Toreros their first base runner of the game. In a 1-0 game, Cougs lead. And that's off speed from Ryan at 77. The curveball foul down the first baseline. And we're still in a one and two count. Been here for a while. One and two, one out, one on for USD. Top two in a game the Cougars lead one nothing. That'll be a single through the right side. And first and second for USD with one out here in the top of the second. So back-to-back -back singles for San Diego. Costello followed by Tejero. And now Cody Jeffries will hit with two out, or one on and two out and one on. Take that again. One out and two on for San Diego. Empty count for Cody Jeffries. Cody hit into two double plays last night. And both were of the 4-6-3 variety. To end the first... And then in the middle of the sixth. On second is Costello. On first is Tejero. And Jeffries hits. And that'll be a single through the left side. Rounding third, Costello. They're going to bring him home. The relay 
will be held by Deming as scoring is Costello from second. It's an RBI single for Cody Jeffries. Back-to-back-to-back singles for USD, and the game is tied at one. Dawson Hall came up firing in left field, but Deming cut it off, and there was no play at the plate. So Costello scores from second. Tejero goes to second. And at first base is Cody Jeffries with an RBI single. Game tied at one here in the top of the second. Ariel Armas, the catcher, takes a strike one. San Diego one run on three hits. BYU one run on two hits. Armas last night grounded out to the pitcher three times. His last three at-bats. The 0-1 to Armas. Check swing. Strike two. In his first at-bat, he reached on a BYU error and then... It was a 1-3 ground out, a 1-3 ground out, and a 1-6-3 double play ground out. His last three outs all. Grounders back to the pitcher. That's hard to do in a single night. Get three ground outs starting with the pitcher. The 0-2 to Armas. The kick and fire from Brady. And that's lined underneath the glove of Brock Watkins at shortstop into left field. He'll try to get the runner at third. And they get him! The force at third. Brock Watkins stayed with it. R.J. Tejero first had to wait to see if Watkins would catch the dipping liner. It went under his glove into left field. Brock chased it down by then. Tejero on the force had to get to third in a hurry. And he gets thrown out at third by Brock Watkins. Two out for San Diego. Here in the top of the second. And reaching on the fielder's choice is Armas. Nine hitter Dustin Allen will dig in in a 1 1 ball game. Two out, two on. Jeffries at second. Advancing on that play into left field, and Armas at first. And they're going to give it a single to Armas under the glove of Brock Watkins at short. So it's four consecutive singles for San Diego. At least for the time being, it's called a single. Costello, Tejero, Jeffries, and Armas for the time being all being credited with singles consecutively here in the second inning. One ball, one strike to Dustin Allen. Costello scored on an RBI single from Jeffries. Jeffries at second. And Armas at first. Setting up outside is Mason Strong. And that will be a base hit through the left side. Rounding third is Jeffries. He'll be coming home. And the throw doesn't get him. The relay from Deming. And Jeffries beats it. So it's a two-run second so far for San Diego. Five consecutive singles for USD. Top of the order, Chase Mydroth. There are just four hits on the board right now for San Diego, but officially five consecutive singles for the Toreros for the moment. Armas at second, Allen at first, and Chase Mydroth. Top of the order for San Diego with two out here in the top of the second, two on for USD. So Dustin Allen with an RBI single scoring Jeffries. Oh, one to Mydroth. And one and one. That's away. Ryan Brady's just thrown his 37th pitch here in the top of the second inning. We are 2 1. San Diego's taking the lead from BYU. Cook's got one in the bottom of the first. Armas at second, Allen at first, Mydroth in the box. 
That's again low and away. Two balls and a strike from Brady to Midroth. Midroth grounded out 5-3 in the first inning. So Midroth is one for six in the series. Five straight singles for San Diego after a 4-3 ground out to open the second. The 2-1 from Brady to Midroth. And that's a breaking ball in for strike two. Curve ball in at 79 for Brady. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. Two runs in so far for San Diego here in the top of the second. Torero's two and BYU one. Ryan Brady from the stretch. They go back pick at second and diving back is Ariel Armas. Costello singled and scored. Tejero singled and was thrown out at third. Jeffries singled in a run and scored. Armas and Allen have since singled with Allen single and RBI single. 2-1 Toreros, 2-2. Full count. As that's low and outside from Ryan Brady. So Ryan laboring a little bit. And both starters for BYU Thursday and Friday found themselves in similar predicaments in the first couple of innings. BYU stuck with Jack Sterner last night, and he pitched an effective six. We'll see how long Ryan Brady is for this one. No one up in the BYU pen. Two runs, five hits for USD. Torero's a 2-1 lead early. Brady kicks and fires. Runners were on the move, and that's a walk. It'll load the bases. So Chase Midroth on a base on balls. And now it's bases loaded for USD. And Angelo Peraza on a five-game hit streak. Well, now hit with the sacks is stacked. Pitching coach Michael Bradshaw will have a chat with Ryan Brady. He and Mason Strong will stroll out to the hill. Ryan's thrown 41 pitches to get through one and two-thirds to this point. Angelo Peraza ready to dig in. In a 2-1 ball game. The Toreros went down 1-2-3 in the top of the first. BYU got one in the bottom of the inning. And then USD is answered with six consecutive batters reaching base on five singles and a base on balls. And that's turned into two runs so far. Cougars looking to get out of this with no more damage done. So San Diego hitting with the bases loaded. The Toreros as a team this year hitting 262 with the bases juiced, 17 for 65. Angelo Peraza. Now bats for the Toreros. Peraza takes strike one. Outside. Peraza's had two at bats with the bases loaded. He's one for two in these situations. Shadows again present themselves. Ryan Brady's body is in the light sunshine as that's taken for strike two. So Brady gets ahead of Peraza 0-2. San Diego 2 and BYU 1. Here at Miller Park are in the top of the second. Cook's looking to get out of this. Bases are loaded, but two gone. But Brady's ahead 0-2 on Peraza. Peraza struck out swinging in the first inning. He's the only strikeout victim for Brady so far tonight. The 0-2. Chase pitch and not offering at it is Peraza taken for ball one. One ball, two strikes, two out. San Diego has strung together five consecutive hits. Has tacked on a base on balls. That's outside for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. The Cougars haven't retired a batter since the leadoff batter for this inning, Caleb Ricketts, on a 4-3 ground out. There was a base runner thrown out for the second down. That's where we are now. Two balls, two strikes, two out. And already two across here in the second for San Diego. Bases loaded for Peraza. The two and two from Brady. And that is sliced down the first baseline into foul territory. 
count stays where it was, even at 2-2. Two and two. BYU thought it would be facing a lefty starter tonight. Instead, the right-hander Ivan Romero started for USD. BYU a losing record 12-13 and 13 against righty starters, a 9-1 and one record against lefty starters. The 2-2. Two -two. The pines are rolling in the wind out there tonight. And that'll be a base hit up the middle. It will score one, and it will score two. They try to back pick it second. That's allowed to go through to the cutoff man, Jacob Wilk, on the mound. And it's a two-run scoring single for Angelo Peraza. And so for San Diego, six singles in the inning. You add a base on balls to that, and you get a four-run second inning so far for San Diego. Scoring were Armas from third and Allen from second. On the bases loaded single up the middle from Angelo Peraza. Ninth hitter of the inning is Kevin Sim. Chase Mydroth at second, Peraza at first. Two on. Still two out, and already 4-1 to one the score. San Diego takes the lead. Now there's action in the BYU bullpen here in the second inning. Ryan Brady may not be long for this one. The 1-0. That'll be in the dirt, blocked by Mason Strong. RBI single from Jeffries, RBI single from Allen, and a two RBI single from Peraza. In a four run second for San Diego. And the second inning is their inning. They are dominant in this inning, as that'll be opposite field. We'll get down and get to the right field corner. A fifth run will score, holding at third, and now coming home, and they do go back to third does Peraza that was a wind that was turning into a hold at third base it'll end up being a double for Kevin Sim and the Toreros have hit around here in the second inning so a double to the right field corner it's an RBI for Sim a single run scores Mydroth came around from second to score on the Sim double to the right field corner Peraza was held at third he was Told to go home, but then hesitated, and they turned it into a stop sign. So Peraza at third. Maidras scores 5-1 San Diego, a five-run second so far. Still two out, and still two on. That'll be a grounder to Ozzie Pratt, handles the short hop, will fire to Wilk. That'll get BYU out of the inning, but for San Diego, as the Toreros hit around with ten batters coming to the plate. Five runs on six hits. On seven hits. Five runs on seven hits. There were no errors, and there were two left on. We go bottom two, San Diego five, and BYU one on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Bottom of the second, and D.H. Josh Cowden leads off for BYU. Cowden's first at-bat of the night. He'll take ball one from Ivan Romero. Strong wind out to right field. In a game, San Diego leads 5-1 after a five-run second. Swing and a miss from Cowden, 1-1. One one. The second inning for San Diego began and ended with Caleb Ricketts grounding out to second. But in between that, seven hits and a base on balls, producing five runs for San Diego. Yeah, between Ricketts starting and ending the inning, every other batsman reached ba uh, reached uh, base for San Diego. That's remarkable. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight consecutive batters reached for USD in the second inning. We get back in the count, three and one to Josh Cowden. So Ricketts had the two ground outs, and Tejero getting thrown out at third. Those were the outs of the inning. Other than that, Everyone did their job for USD, either hitting or walking. And that's a walk for Josh Cowden to lead off the BYU second. So base on balls, issued to Cowden. 
And the Cougs have led off each of their first two innings with their leadoff battle reaching. Mason Strong, the freshman catcher, will hit. We're in the bottom of the second. San Diego 5 and BYU 1. San Diego 5 runs on 7 hits. BYU 1 run on 2 hits. And that's off speed. Taken for ball 1. Slider missing from Romero. One ball, no strikes. To Mason Strong, got a man on first. Grounded foul, just outside the third base bag. One ball, one strike. BYU's third base coach is Brent Herring. First base coach is Noah Hill. Trent Pratt, BYU's interim head coach, going from third base to dugout when the coaching change was made. Right-handed hitting Mason Strong awaits the 1-1 from Ivren Romero. San Diego 5 and BYU 1. Romero winds up and delivers. Grounded behind the pitcher. Second baseman tries to glove it and with the glove get it to short to get one, but they get none. And it'll be a shot up the middle that was handled well on the backhand by the second baseman then gloved it to his infield compatriot at short, covering second. But Cowden beat it, and the ball might have been bobbled there as well. Yeah, it didn't make the clean catch. Jeffries at second. So it's first and second, no one out for BYU. Call that a hit for BYU. That shot up the middle was hard to handle, just past the pitcher, just behind the pitcher's glove. There's a nice combo play attempt between second baseman and shortstop, but the ball was bobbled at second, allowing Cowden to reach. So Cowden at second and strong at first. And the Cougs looking to come back in this one down 5-1. Still no one out. Dawson Hall's the hitter. 1-0 to the left-handed hitting left fielder, Dawson Hall. That's taken strike one. Fastball at 89 from Romero. American flag in right center field is blowing out to right center field. The 1-1. One, one. That's hit in the air opposite field by Dawson Hall. Left fielder going back and making the catch about five yards shy of the track. Runners will stay where they are. And it's one out on a long out to left for Dawson Hall. If USD had stayed with its original intended lineup, Hall would not have been in the lineup. But when they went from lefty to righty, it brought Dawson back into the group. Top of the order now for Ozzie Pratt. One out, two on for BYU. Cowden at second, strong at first. Breaking ball settles in for strike one. No balls and a strike, one out, two on. BYU down four. Ozzie Pratt doubled and scored the Cougs' lone run in the first. Lead-off double for Ozzie to open this game. And he's almost hit as he turned away from that inside for one and one. San Diego has scored 52 second-inning runs to the opponent's 21 this year including five second-inning runs for USD tonight. And Ozzie Pratt's going to ground that just foul down the first baseline. One ball, two strikes to the freshman second baseman. And the nephew of BYU's interim head coach, Trent Pratt, he's Ozzie Pratt. He and Colin Reuter, both coming out of the same high school, Magnolia Heights High School in Oxford, Mississippi. Oxford home of Ole Miss. The one-two. Some brighter sunshine now. As that's fouled to the screen. Count will stay one ball, two strikes to Pratt. Ozzie Pratt's now reached in 11 of his last 13 games. 
He has hits in 10 of his last 13 games. He's BYU's batting average leader on the year. Ozzie hitting 312 on the season. The 1 2 to Pratt. Romero deals. Well hit to right field. Right fielder ranging to his right makes the catch. Runner on second will tag, get to third. That's Cowden going second to third on the fly out to right from Ozzie Pratt. So Brock Watkins will hit with two out and two on. Runners on the corners for Brock. Cowden tagging on the Ozzie fly out to right. Mason Strong stayed where he was at first. So first and third for BYU with Brock Watkins digging in against Ivrin Romero. Romero's long outing this year, four and a third innings. His high pitch count, just 55. He's sitting at 37 right now into his second inning of work. He's through one and two thirds. San Diego, a 5 1 lead. Breaking ball didn't break, stays high for ball one. Brock Watkins, in contrast to his first at bat, has let us see his face. He had that neck covering that gator pulled up to his eyes in the first inning. It's now down around his neck here for inning two. It's a conversation between home plate umpire and USD head coach Brock Ungrich. Ungrich unhappy with something to do with the Arbiter crew as he dismissively waves at them as he goes back into the dugout with a 1-0 count facing Brock Watkins. One ball, no strikes, two out, two on. BYU down four, five to one. Brock will take ball two high and away. San Diego scoring all five in the top of this inning. We're in the bottom of the second. A 3-0 count now to Watkins. And Brock's shirt is whipping in the wind in the batter's box. And he'll take and take strike one. So a take on a 3-0 count turns into a 3-1 count. Brock BYU shortstop has started all 37 games for BYU this year. All 36, beg your pardon, at shortstop. The 3-1 to Brock. That's inside, takes his base. BYU loads the bases. So base on balls issued to Watkins. It's BYU's third walk. So Cowden at third. Strong will go to second on the walk of Watkins. And Watkins is at first for Mitch McIntyre. BYU on the year. 362 with the bases loaded. Mitch McIntyre has a very nice number himself with the sacks stacked. He's four for six with the bases loaded. Take strike one from Romero. Romero just threw his 43rd pitch. BYU with the bases loaded. Two out, bottom two, and Mitch McIntyre with hits in his last three coming in two tonight with a chance to get BYU right back in this game. And Mitch finds himself down 0-2, takes two strikes, and Romero gets ahead. Again, McIntyre, six bases loaded at-bats. Four hits in those six at-bats. Can he make it five for seven? Bases loaded, bottom second, San Diego five, and BYU one. And it's a backwards K. It's a take and a strikeout. A cut looking for McIntyre. BYU leaves. The base is loaded for BYU in the bottom of the second. No runs on a hit. There were no errors, and three were left on. We go to the top of the third, San Diego 5, and BYU 1 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Third baseman Jack Costello leads things off for San Diego. Here in the top of the third, Costello singled and scored in the second. He scored the first Torero run. That was a five-run second. They lead 5-1 here top three. Ryan Brady stays on the hill for BYU and delivers strike one. With his 52nd pitch of the night. Jake Porter's up in the BYU pen. And that's outside for a ball. 
One and one, two, Jack Costello. Costello now three for five in the series with three RBI. That's a healthy hack and a miss for strike two. One ball, two strikes to Costello. Jack Costello, San Diego's second in hits. And it's a swinging strikeout from Costello, his first K of the day. And one out for San Diego here in the top of the third. Caleb Ricketts took the lead in hits last night. Came into today with 49. Costello with a single has tied him at 49. Costello came in two today at second, but he did hit in the second. As for now, he's back in the dugout with that swinging K. RJ Tejero singled and was thrown out at third in the second. That's high and outside from Brady. One ball, no strikes to Tejero, the DH for San Diego. Tejero three for four in the series with two RBI. San Diego 5 and BYU 1, top third here in Provo. Two balls, no strikes from Brady. That was pitch number 57. Thirty-six strikes, twenty-one balls for Brady so far. That's a grounder to second, covering his Brady at first, and Pratt will make the throw there for the four-one. A ground out and two gone for San Diego here in the top of the third. Tajero grounds out four-one. Jacob Wilk had to go to his right, but it was beyond Wilk to Pratt. Pratt made the handle, and then Brady covering first smartly and steps on the bag for the second out of the third inning. Cody Jeffries with an RBI single in the second. He had the third of five consecutive singles for USD in the second. The breaking ball drops in at 77, the curve for strike one. Pitcher's body and mound now all ensconced in shadow. The 0-1. That'll be low for ball one. One ball, one strike, two out, no one on for USD top three. That's another breaking ball. And swung on and missed for strike two. The curve at 79. So Brady drops the hammer there for strike number two. One and two to the shortstop Jeffries. Another breaking ball. Fouled out of play. On the ground down the first baseline. One and two. Five WCC series being contested tonight. Game two for this series. Game one for Gonzaga St. Mary's, Pacific Portland, Pepperdine Santa Clara, and USF LMU. The one two from Ryan Brady. Two out bases clear. That'll be high and outside ball two. Steady data breaking balls from Ryan Brady to Cody Jeffries. Jeffries, two for his last 15 at the plate. That's a high fastball fouled out of play. A change on that or a break that just hung up there. Two balls, two strikes, two out. San Diego's up 5-1 here in the top of the third. The windup from Brady. That's opposite field, right at Dawson Hall. Dawson misplays it, and that'll be an E7, and advancing to second, sliding ahead of the throw, is Cody Jeffries. And that was probably a sun ball for Dawson Hall out there in left field. But as he was watching it into his glove, it just popped out of the leather and dropped in left field. It'll be an E7. So Dawson Hall with his first error, his first fielding error of the season. And reaching is Cody Jeffries. 
So Jeffries is second on the E7. Error on the left fielder. Ariel Armas will hit. The right-handed hitting Ariel Armas takes away for ball one. Ryan Brady up to 66 pitches now, nearing his high pitch count for the season. At 73, will he be allowed to get there? No one throwing currently in the BYU bullpen, but Jake Porter already got warm. The 1-0, two out, one on here in the San Diego third. Taking his lead off second is Jeffries. Armas takes outside and a half check, strike one. So it'll be a check swing strike. Yeah, they'll say the barrel came through the front hip, so it's not going to be a call strike, but a check swing strike. One ball, one strike to Ariel Armas. He singled and scored in the second. That's inside for ball two. Two balls and a strike to Armas. Armas hitless last night. And so now one for five in the series as he takes low for ball three. This will be the 70th pitch of the night for Ryan Brady, whose high pitch count on the year is 73. His longest outing is five complete. And he is through two and two-thirds as of the moment. Three balls and a strike, two out, one on. The one on is Cody Jeffries on second base after an error on left fielder Dawson Hall. Taking off and stealing third is Jeffries. Rising to throw was strong. There was no throw. And now the sixth run is 90 feet away for San Diego. San Diego 5 and BYU 1. That was ball four to Armas, who took the base on balls as Jeffries was stealing. So first and third now, two out for Dustin Allen, the, re the center fielder. No balls and a strike on pitch number 71. So with two more pitches, Ryan Brady will tie his season high in pitch count. Jeffries at third, Armas at first. And Dustin Allen. An RBI single in the second, one for one tonight. And two for four in the series. The 0-1 to Allen. As Ryan Brady works third base side of the rubber. Runners on the corners, two gone in a 5-1 ball game. Inside and low and taken off the dirt by Mason Strong. One ball, one strike. Dustin Allen has started all 37 for San Diego. And he works very near the home plate line in the batter's box. A swing and a miss from Dustin Allen. And he's down on the count one and two. So with this next pitch, Ryan Brady will have his new high pitch count for the year at 74. He's at 73 right now. Jake Porter gets back up in the pen. Right-hander warming up in the BYU bullpen. The 1-2 doesn't get the call as taking second is Armas. The count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Jeffrey stole third a moment ago. Armas just took second on that pitch from Brady. So a pair of steals, neither of which drew a, thru, drew a, thru, uh, 
drew a throw from BYU. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on. Two runners in scoring position for Dustin Allen. Allen hitting 372 with runners in scoring position. He'll ground that to first. The scoop from Wilk to Brady steps on the bag. And no runs across for San Diego in the third. For San Diego, no runs, no hits. There was an error, and there were two left on. We go to the bottom of the third, San Diego 5 and BYU 1 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU Athletics would like to recognize Burger Supreme for being tonight's game sponsor and thank them for being an important part of our team. Burger Supreme, Provo's favorite spot for fresh, flavorful, and fantastic food. At the bottom of the third here at Miller Park, Jacob Wilk will lead off for BYU. Take a breaking ball inside for strike one from Ivron Romero. Romero and the Toreros leading BYU 5-1 to one, bottom three. One ball evens the count. Wilk singled home BYU's only run in the first. He brought home Ozzie Pratt. Who led off the game with a double for BYU. Led off BYU's game. Bottom of the first. Strike two taken by Jacob Wilk. So Ivren Romero. Whose high pitch count is 55. Just through pitch number 48. For a strike. That'll be high for ball two. Romero always comes out of the pen until tonight. His first start of the season. As Bryson Motts was a late scratch. Will they choose to throw Motts tomorrow? I would think so, but one never knows. Romero kicks and deals, and that's fouled to the screen. Two balls and two strikes for Wilk. BYU slugging percentage leader, second in on-base percentage. He's up to 4.05. And his on-base rate, he's tied for first in home runs with five. The 2-2. Hits that in the air to right field. Right fielder takes five steps in, and Peraza makes the catch. One out for BYU in the bottom of the third. Jacob Wilk hitting or slugging 700 in league play. With Wilk flying out to right, Austin Deming hits, and he flew out to right in his first at-bat in the first inning. Two for four, two runs, two RBI last night for Dem. That's inside for ball one from Romero. That was pitch number 52 for the Torero right-hander. Full wind-up and delivery, and that is striped. Into the left field corner. That'll be extra bases for Deming. As the left fielder bobbles near the wall. It's a one-out double for Austin Deming. His third double of the series. He was two for four last night with two doubles. And now he's one for two today with a double. So three for six and two and three two baggers for Austin Deming. Who's on second base with one gone. And Ryan Sapiti hitting. For BYU hit number four on the night. BYU one run on four hits. San Diego five runs on seven hits. Cougs have the lone fielding error. Empty count, one out, one on for BYU. Sapiti fouls it into foul, foul territory on the first baseline. Into the temporary bleachers down that baseline. Sun setting to the west and breaking through clouds to illuminate Y Mountain right now. The diamond here at Miller Park is shadowed up. 5-1 ball game, USD leading it. 0-1 to Sapiti. And he'll again put that into foul territory down the first baseline. No balls, two strikes to Sapiti. Ryan Sapiti last night, one RBI, giving him 28 on the year. Maintaining his BYU RBI lead. He's tied for third in home runs with four. And that's a third consecutive ball fouled out of play down the first baseline.
No balls, two strikes, one out, one on for BYU bottom three. Deming with a one out double is at second base. Ryan P with runners in scoring position, hitting 286 on the year. 272 for the season, high from Romero. And so both starting pitchers tonight have set season highs in pitch count. Ryan Brady for BYU and Ivan Romero for San Diego. UST 5 and BYU 1. On a cool windy night here at Miller Park. The kick and fire. And that'll be grounded foul down the third baseline. Nice handle there from third base coach Brent Herring off the hop. Right-handed bat of Ryan Sapiti. Swing and a miss for Ryan. Down on strikes. And two gone for BYU here in the bottom of the third. So Sapiti caught looking in the first and swinging now in the third. Sapiti, BYU's leader in strikeouts, now has 40 Ks on the year. 34 hits and 40 strikeouts for Sapiti. Josh Cowden hits. He walked and got to third in the second. He was stranded. Empty count, two out, and one on for BYU. The Cougar DH Cowden takes ball one from Romero. There's a lefty up in the San Diego pen. That's Ian Churchill. The 1-0. Goes to two balls and no strike. Ball got away from the catcher. Armas tracks it down in front of the plate. And staying at second is Austin Deming. BYU's runs leader, Austin Deming, at second base. He's in scoring position for Cowden. Josh hitting just 118 with runners in scoring position. San Diego has scored five in this game. It's 5-1. to one. That's three straight balls delivered from Romero to Cowden. So you got to think Josh will be on the take here on the 3-0. Austin Deming warming his hands at second. Just saw Cosmo saunter on by. As that take will be for strike one. Normally the heat generated inside Cosmo's getup you look at as, oh, the poor guy when you're watching him at football games when it's a little bit warmer, but tonight's a good night to be Cosmo. 3-1. When it comes to temperature and comfort, 3-1 with two out, one on. And that's popped up into short right field. Second baseman Midroth will call for it and snag it, and that will be it for BYU in the third. For BYU in the bottom of the third, no runs on one hit. There were no errors. One was left on. We go top four, San Diego five, and BYU one on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.